Hey everybody, uh, this is Laura Hall. I'm the camp director of Camp St. Charles and I'm really excited uh, to be chatting with you online and answer your questions about Camp St. Charles. Um, if you have any questions about camp, I would love for you to go ahead and enter those in the comments and I will do my best to address them as we're kind of moving along this morning. Um, this is my first time doing a Facebook Live, so please bear with me if I have any, you know, <laughs> little technical glitches, but um, I'm excited to have an opportunity to share with you. If you are a first-time camp family and you would like to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, I have been scheduling some phone calls, 15-minute phone calls, with families so you can ask your specific questions and I can answer them. So if you did not receive that invitation or you need me to resend it, um, please email me. Uh, my email is director at campstcharles.org or if you're on our website, uh, almost all of the kind of generic emails come to my inbox so I will receive it and can send you an invite. So I'm gonna take a look over here at the camp website. There's a lot of information that will be helpful to you as a parent preparing for camp. One of the reasons I'm doing this Facebook Live today is because um, my own children have been Camp St. Charles campers for years and years, of course, and I was a camp counselor before I was the director. So a lot of things about life at camp are second nature to me, but are very new to a new family, and I want to make sure that you feel secure. My son is getting ready to go to his first overnight camp that is not at Camp St. Charles, his first experience away. He's been a Camp St. Charles camper for a long time. And I have a lot of questions about how it's going to go and what we should prepare for and packing and things like that. Probably questions that other parents have too. And um, I'm hoping this will help you to feel prepared uh, for getting your camper off to, to head to camp. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to show you is the tab that you are most likely to need to reach, and that is Camp Form. So if you're on the camp website, which is CampStCharles.org and CampStCharles.com, they both point to the same website. If you click on Current Families, you'll get a little drop down, and this is where you'll probably spend most of your time, on Camp Forms. And if you click Camp Forms, you're going to see all of our current forms there. Um, the health form, application for enrollment, application for tuition assistance, mini session application, summer camp information, um, lots of things there. So let's start by looking at the health form, the camp health form. This is essential for every one of our campers. Most of it is kind of your standard health history information uh, for you to fill out and uh, permission for us to treat in the event of an emergency. This is the same form that we use for both staff and campers, so you'll see some questions that are a little more directed to uh, camp staff. Something I often get questions about is this emergency contact other than parents. Parents are going to be our first call. We're absolutely going to call you first if there were some kind of an emergency. Uh, but in the event that we're unable to reach a parent, we need to have another contact person. Um, and some folks, if you're going to be traveling while your child is at camp, you may choose to give us a long list of other emergency contact people. Or it might be a grandparent, someone else. But um, please give us the best number you can so we have another person to reach. Uh, most of it is standard health history information, telling us about any medication. We have a camp nurse that will do all the administration of any uh, medication that's going to be needed at camp. Questions and then we also have how it's going to go. Whoops, sorry. Um, then we have a list of common over-the-counter medications for, you know, uh, issues that we might encounter like poison ivy or a headache, things like that. And then you can make notes about what your preference are preferences are related to the kind of medication you'd like us to give. And then you can sign here at the bottom to give us permission um, or not. If you choose not to grant permission for those things, that means our nurse would have to uh, get a hold of you, get verbal permission any time of day or night for any um, non-life-threatening emergency that we might need to address. So a headache at 2 a.m. might mean that your camper has to wait a bit. So that's up to you how you want to do that. We have some general health questions. Um, we would really appreciate if we can get the most uh, up-to-date information. In the past, it was required for you to include your child's entire immunization list. You can if you'd like. But if your child has 
uh, received immunizations on the typical schedule, you can click yes, and then you don't need to provide the whole immunization record. If your child has received immunizations differently or skipped some immunizations, um, you may need to attach the list. Uh, and then the final page is the part that the doctor completes. My suggestion when you take your health form up to Camp Parents, uh, to, to your doctor to complete, you fill out the three pages, and then you take this first page, this last page, I'm sorry, and just kind of hand it right to the doctor. Sometimes they want you to leave it to fill it out. Um, but I suggest if you can possibly get them to fill it out while you're right there, it'll save you some time and hassle. So we have some questions coming in. I'm going to answer the questions related to the health forms. What if you turned in a form last year? If you turned in a form last year, it may still be valid depending on your camper's medical needs. If you have a child with no particular medical concerns, does not take medication on a regular basis, then the health exam, as long as the date of the exam is less than 24 months, from the time of your camper's attendance, then you can still use that form. We recommend that you reach out to camp so we can verify the date of the exam that we have on file so that you know for sure if you have the correct um, exam form on file. We do encourage an annual physical, but we know sometimes for insurance purposes it can be hard to get one each year depending on how rigid your uh, insurance information is. All right, I'm looking at some questions coming in. Uh, I think we got our, our health form uh, questions answered. The health form is due two weeks before you come to camp. So I see a question, is there extra help for first-time campers who will need help with the showers? Yes, um, our first-time campers are, and younger campers are going to be kind of first to the line at shower time, and we're going to have counselors and mentors who are older campers that are kind of big brother, big sister to campers who are going to assist them in getting ready uh, to go to the shower. Some suggestions I have for that, practice taking showers at home, especially practice taking your little shower basket into the bathroom because our shower house is immediately adjacent to the cabin but not connected to it. So that can be a new experience for kids to walk over to showers. Campers might appreciate a towel that has like a Velcro closure or a light bathrobe to wear um, to the bathroom so that they feel covered and modest. And um, if your camper can use the all-in-one body wash, shampoo, conditioner in one, that saves a lot of hassle for campers because then they're just carrying that one bottle uh, with them to the shower, and we're going to help them practice that. So I would encourage you to practice that at home. Make sure they know what their shower supplies are, and then absolutely we're going to help those first-time campers get there first. And throughout the session, our younger campers, six, seven, eight, and nine-year-old campers, they are going to be at the front of the shower line, partly because they can be quite tired at the end of the camp day, and we want to make sure that they are showered and settled into bed so that if they're very tired, they can get to sleep a little bit earlier than uh, our other campers. All right, um, I'd like to shift gears a little bit to talk about packing because we touched on that a little bit. So if we're back on the camp page under current families and looking at camp forms, we have the packing list. So I encourage you to print this out and involve your child as much as possible in the packing. If you have a six or seven year old, that probably sounds silly to you because they're not going to be ready to do their packing um, individually, but I still would love for them to be involved. Sometimes campers don't realize what they have in their trunk uh, because they weren't there when it was packed. So a suggestion I have for parents with younger campers is to stack up all the things that you want your child to take to camp and have them put the items into the trunk. Then they see each item. And I prepared for you, this is one of my favorite strategies. A camp mom shared this with us uh, some years ago. This is one outfit in a bag. Shorts, t-shirt, underwear, socks, uh, especially for younger campers or anybody that just needs some help being organized, you can throw one day's clothes in a bag like this, and then you'll have several of these bags that will stay in the trunk. It's a lot easier for campers to keep that organized. Um, on that same note, labeling, labeling, labeling is super, super helpful. I want to show you my favorite thing uh, here, which are Mabel's labels. These are labels that you can order to stick on your child's clothes. These are my son Owen's labels. He always chooses this little skull and crossbones, but you don't have to choose anything that creepy. Um, but anyway, there's a label that perfectly fits on the tag of clothes, and it stays on through the wash, 
really, really helpful. Counselors do a great job getting items back to kids if they are labeled carefully. You don't have to buy Mabel's labels. If you want to, there is a link from our website uh, that can help you shop for those, and they are super handy uh, for me. Oh, I see a parent saying that they used the bag method last year. All right. Yes, that was uh, my strategy when my campers were younger. Now my kids are a little older and they like to do it uh, their own way, but I'm glad that was helpful um, using the bag method for packing. Um, other things related to packing, we have on the packing list a trunk or a footlocker or some other kind of container. If you're on the camp website, Oh, let's see, at the bottom of forms, we've got the link to Mabel's label, so that's where you can shop for those labels. And if you scroll down here, you can go to the camp store. The online camp store has different items than the store that we have on site <clears throat> on opening days and visiting days. But if you're online on Everything Summer Camp, they have great trunks. Now, this is not required that you purchase a trunk through Everything Summer Camps, but we have had really great success with these trunks. They're very sturdy. The hinges hold up. Um, they're high-quality trunks. Um, again, it doesn't have to be this trunk, and we don't have a particular size that we require, but we do want you to have something sturdy enough that campers can sit or stand on it. We don't bring uh, suitcases very often uh, because they get dirty. They go outside and they come back in. We have a few campers that are traveling internationally to join us at camp, and we will provide a trunk for those campers. We have a few trunks uh, on hand to share with campers that may be traveling a long way. So we have some international campers that will, will borrow our trunks uh, for camp if they're not purchasing their own. Okay, I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk to you about mail at camp. Campers love to get mail. At camp, it's kind of a highlight. After lunch, we come around and deliver mail. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, snail mail, of course, sending regular mail. We will give you, when you arrive at camp, a yellow folder that has a bunch of information, including how to send mail to your camper. So you can old school snail mail. These are letters my daughter sent me while she was at camp. Yes, my own children will actually send me mail from one side of camp to the other. It's still fun. Um, so we have that as an option. One little challenge that we have at camp being out in such a rural area is that sometimes the mail can take a little bit longer than we expect. Uh, and campers love to get packages. So if you'd like to bring a package for your child at check-in and hand it off to us, we can deliver it. We only have enough space for one package per camper uh, to be delivered that way, but that's an option for you. If you want to bring a package and hand it to us, we'll deliver it later. And then you can send and receive cards and letters. And then we have a pretty cool feature called bunk notes. And I'm going to show you a little bit how to use bunk notes. This is totally optional. Um, included with your registration is access to uh, photos of your camper. We have a staff photographer and we will take hundreds of digital pictures every day so you can see your camper enjoying their time at camp. So when you're ready to check out the pictures, right here on the website, you're going to click on this icon that kind of looks like a Polaroid that says summer photos and emails. And when you click that, it's going to take you to Bunk One. And Bunk One is the same site that we used uh, to enroll for camp. If you used online registration, you have already been to Bunk One. And when it gets closer to summer, co closer to the time when your children are going to be arriving, you will see some other features have been added to this page. So you can do this a day or two before your child arrives. You can do this when you get home Sunday night after check-in. There's no rush, really, to do it in advance. But bunk notes are kind of a fun way for you to keep in touch with your camper at camp. So your first step would be to go over here to shop and uh, select bunk note credits and purchase some bunk note credits. The photo gallery is, is free and included. You can view the photos. You can save your camper's favorites into a folder to check out with them when they get home. Um, and you can also, and so you don't need to purchase that. And then if you want to send and receive bunk notes, you can click to purchase some bunk note credits. Now, I've already done that in advance here, so I'm going to send a bunk note to my camper so you can see what that's like. There's also an app that will allow you to do this. So it's from me. I'm going to send a bunk note to my daughter. 
I've used the system before, so my daughter's in cabin two. Again, if it's a different cabin, you can enter that here. And then we have a lot of options to add things to our bunk note. Here is the draft of what it's going to look like and how many credits I'm using to send this message. So you can do lots of things to kind of jazz up your bunk notes. You can add a photo, you can put a little border around it, baseball scores, etc. Now, this is an important part. This is something that often gets missed. Bunk reply stationary. If I want my camper to be able to write back through bunk notes, I need to click bunk reply stationary. What that means is when my bunk note prints, it will also print a sheet that looks like this. Looks like this. This is going to allow my camper to write back in their own handwriting. They'll turn it into a counselor and then it will get faxed and you will receive it. You, the parent, will receive it as an email. So I'm going to write her a quick note. All right, and then because I've clicked Bunk Reply Stationery, she's also going to get um, a reply when this prints. So it has sent the bunk note, and when she writes back, I will receive it in my bunk replies. So I'm going to check out the replies that I've received here in a second. So when you send the bunk note, you'll see there's a little note over here. Bunk notes need to be submitted by 11 a.m. in order to reach your camper on the same day. So if you're at work on Tuesday morning and you want your camper to receive that message on Tuesday, please make sure you've sent it by 11 a.m., which I just made it. It's 1017. So that will go in the batch of bunk notes that are delivered that day. Anything sent after 11 gets put in the next day's batch. So your camper will absolutely still receive it, but it might be a little later than you expect. So send it by 11 a.m. for that same day. If you write several bunk notes in the same 24-hour period, your camper will receive them all at the same time. And then bunk replies. So if your camper writes back, which we will remind them, show them, help them do that. This is an actual bunk note from one of my kids last summer. It comes as a PDF. And so there it is, bunk reply from Owen Hall. He says, the fan I got is working fine. Don't really want to stay in the house. I'm drinking lots of water. My feet aren't really bothering me. Love, Owen. All right, that's pretty good for my son. That's like three whole sentences. So we will remind campers about writing. If you have not heard from your camper and you want us to prompt them to follow up to make sure they're receiving the bunk reply, we're happy to do that. Um, we will encourage kids to write at least one sentence. Uh, last summer, there was a camper who was not taking time to write to his parent, and I said, you know, please, it's, it's sort of like your mom has paid a couple of dollars to hear from you. So at least, you know, she wants to know that you're alive. That's what the mother had said to me. I just want to know that he's alive. He wrote, I'm alive on the bunk reply. So some kids will write a lot and draw pictures and, you know, really tell their parents a lot about what they're doing at camp, and, and some kids not so much. But anyway, bunk notes are kind of a fun way. It's very unplugged for the kids because they're never at a computer, but very plugged in for parents, so you get quick turnaround communication. Um, anyway, so I hope that's helpful to you. A lot of times that including a bunk reply step is missed. And the only way you can send a bunk reply is while you're writing a bunk note to include bunk reply. Um, if you have two children in the same cabin, like if you have two girls or two boys, we usually put siblings together uh, unless you request for them to be in separate cabins. So you could send one bunk note and, and put both children's names on it, and they can share that if you'd like. It's a way to kind of stretch your, your uh, bunk notes a little bit further. Photos are posted each night, hundreds of pictures daily. Here's some we were kind of practicing this summer with some photos, but I can show you last year, 2016 um, photos. Each day, you can see most days there's, let's see, 86 to 166 photos. Kind of depends on the day. If it's rainy, it's harder to get as many photos. Often the day starts with the honor cabin photo can see campers proudly displaying the honor cabin. Uh, when we clean our cabins in the morning, it's a fun competition, and the winning cabin gets to display the honor cabin flag. Um, you can see here we were celebrating a birthday at camp. 
and you'll get pictures of your campers enjoying their activities. You can share, uh, save your favorite photos into a folder uh, to view when your camper gets home from camp. And then you can order, you can order photo gifts. You can do lots of fun things with the pictures after the fact. Those can be nice, nice gifts as well. All right, let me look back here and see, is there any, okay. The question is about, is there any way to request campers be in the same cabin or are they already assigned? You absolutely can request for campers to be in the same cabin. Um, so on your registration, there's a place to do that. If you didn't include it on your registration, you can just shoot us an email. About two weeks before a session begins, we'll send out kind of a last call for requests. So that's another way that you can edit or add a request if you find out that a camper, a child your camper knows is going to be at camp. Uh, absolutely, we can do that. The only you know, we ask that both families make the request, though. So if you're requesting that your child be with a friend, please talk to that other family and have them make the same request. That way we know we're honoring requests that everybody wants. Um, some families choose to have their child stay in the cabin with best friends, and some want them to make new connections as well. So that's, that's just a personal preference for various families. All right, I have a question from Mercedes. So if we send a bunk note before 11 a.m., does the reply come back the same day or the next day? Good question. That depends on when your child replies. So if you sent a bunk note and a reply, the child is going to receive it, and we are going to encourage them to write back to you right away. And then you should, if they've written that day, you'll receive the response by about 2 p.m., um, it's a pr pretty quick turnaround from when we collect it in the office and fax them and you receive them as an email. Uh, occasionally, a camper will write one later in the day and hand it in, and then you'll receive it as soon as we have it faxed to the company. Um, so, yes, usually it's a pretty quick turnaround. Tashia asked, can you purchase bunk notes prior to camp and send them with your camper? You can print bunk reply stationery in advance and, and pack it in the trunk. I don't love it because I think that usually the bunk reply forms get crumpled up or lost or I've seen campers sit down and write one sentence on each sheet of paper all on the same day. So you can send them in advance. I think it works best for most campers if you send a reply with your bunk note and do that. You know, some people will do that every day. Some people will do it every few days. But I think kids are more successful with returning it if they receive it. The other um, advantage to sending it with a bunk note is that the counselor will see it and can prompt the child. They may not know that your camper has a bunch of bunk reply stationery in the trunk in order to uh, remind them. Yes, Becky, um, my son is very excited to spend some time with Eddie as well. He has been talking about seeing him at camp. So it's kind of fun for me that that um, that my kids are campers and, and have made some really close friends at camp. So absolutely, we're happy to make requests. While we're talking about requests, <clears throat> I want to make sure that parents know that there are team requests and cabin requests. The team is the group of kids of the same age group who are going to do their assigned activities together. And the cabin is where the campers uh, live. So those could be different groups. So if your child is coming with a best buddy that they really want to be with a lot, you probably want to request the same team and the same cabin. If you want to have your child spend some time with their good friend and some time with others, I would recommend uh, requesting the same cabin and then maybe kind of letting the chips fall where they may as far as team assignments. But that's just um, my personal preference. Uh, the specs for the trunk. Um, good question. Hi, Ethel. Thank you for joining us. Um, we don't really have very specific sizes of the trunks that you need to have. Trunks, foot lockers, big heavy-duty plastic containers, these are all things that campers can bring to camp. It, can, it just needs to be sturdy enough that children can sit or stand on it and not crush it. The kind that you find at Target and Walmart as a back-to-college option, they tend to not hold up very well. So I would um, discourage you from selecting those. We do have on our camp store, down here, if you click on camp store, it'll redirect you to everythingsummercamps.com. And we have had really great luck with their trunks. It is a little bit of an investment, so sometimes families that are joining us for the first time may not want to spend that much on a trunk. 
Um, so that's that's up to you. Again, it's not required, but we do want a sturdy uh, container of some sort because campers will sit on them. They'll play cards together there. It becomes kind of like furniture in the cabin. So it's helpful if it's a very sturdy uh, container. All right, let's see. I have some other notes. We talked about mail and packages. Oh, text updates. I have learned that there are parents that want lots and lots of updates at camp and that there are some parents that would prefer to only receive the essential information. So um, working hard this year to try to make sure that I meet your needs, whatever your preference is. So we're back on the camp forms page that I showed you before. And I really, really encourage you to sign up for text updates here. We send a lot of information by email, and usually that's adequate. But we all get a lot of email, and it's easy to miss important updates. So we have set up these text alerts. There's one um, list for each session, and it will give you very specific reminders for your camper session. So I encourage you to opt in for those text updates. It's going to be reminders about check-in, reminders about visiting day, timing, and and things like that. And then if you want more information about what's happening at camp, that's where Bunk One Photos, Facebook, Twitter, we're going to share more there. And we're going to keep the text updates to the essentials. So they're going to be high priority reminders. And then if we have a thunderstorm or extreme heat or something else that we want to communicate with parents about how we're responding to those issues, we're going to do it through the text updates. So it says text alerts. You can also opt to receive them by email if that is a very reliable way for you to receive information. So I encourage you to sign up for whatever is the best way to reach you. Um, that would be really great if we could get everybody on that list. Um, let's see. What else do I have on my list of things I wanted to discuss with you? Oh, check-in. Let's talk a little bit about check-in. If you're uh, a first-time camp parent, you might be really eager to arrive right at the beginning of check-in. Check-in is now from 1 until 3 p.m. on the opening Sunday of your camper session. We used to do it from noon until 3. I've pushed it back uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I want to make sure that you have time to have um, a nice filling lunch with your camper before arriving at camp because the first meal we're going to serve is dinner. So I want you to make sure that you have a chance to have a good lunch before you come to check in. The other reason is I kind of discovered that a lot of first-time campers would come right at the beginning of check-in and they'd get settled in and they had a little too much time waiting for the action to really get started. So I've, I've trimmed back check-in time so that it's from 1 until 3 p.m. And then if you're a first-time camp parent, um, I would encourage you to aim for 1.30 or 2 o'clock for arrival. Unless you have a lot of specific concerns or questions you want to address with us at camp, that gives you plenty of time to settle in, but not too much time for your camper to be waiting for things to really get underway. So that would be my suggestion. Oh, I see I have a parent that says, I'm currently receiving text alerts. Do I need to sign up again? No, you do not. Just make sure that you are signed up for the correct session. If your camper is, is attending the same session that they attended in the past, you should be all set. Um, if that session has changed, you might want to make sure that you're receiving the correct session updates. And I'll start sending out kind of some text um, test run messages so that you can check that. Okay, and then if you do log on on here, if you want to leave one list and add another one to make sure you're getting the correct ones, it's pretty easy to do through Remind, so we can help you with that. Um, in addition to these links on the website for signing up for text updates, you're going to receive a handout about it uh, when you arrive at camp. You'll get a yellow folder. A lot of it will be duplicate information that I've sent you by email. But I know how things get, and it's, it, it's um, you know, we, we live in a busy world, and we're all getting lots and lots of information, so I want to make sure that you have everything you need um, right there. Okay, communicating with us at camp while your child is at camp. And up to this point, you have probably um, done more communicating with Sherry Belial, who is our registrar, and she's the one that processes payments, help you with registration, things like that. Um, during the summer, 
I want to make sure you have this number in your phone, 301-934-8799. That is the main camp phone number. So that number is the number I would love every parent to have handy. And um, that number will forward to the leadership cell phones at camp. It's what we receive, you know, all of our incoming calls from. Uh, we might call from various phones, different leadership folks might call you, so it might be a different cell phone number showing up. But when you're calling us, please make sure that you're using this number. And also here you'll see the uh, P.O. box. That's the best way to send uh, snail mail to camp, letters and postcards and things like that. Um, and we'll give you some more detailed information about sending mail to camp in emails leading up to camp, as well as that folder that'll give you the physical address if, um, if you need to send something by FedEx, for example. Um, hi, Anne. Thanks for joining us. I see that you missed the first half. Yes, I will post a recording of this uh, when we're finished with our Facebook Live post so you can catch the things that that you missed. And uh, just to all parents, just in case you were not able to sign up for it, I have a sign up genius where you can um, request a 15 minute phone conversation, especially if you have any particular concerns or questions about your child. I would love to talk to you and answer your questions, help you feel comfortable before you check into camp. So if you did not receive an invitation for that, please email me and I will add you to that list. I sent it out to new camp families, but if you're a returning camp parent and you would like to chat with me, I'd be happy to do that with you. <clears throat> um, speaking of, one thing I didn't touch on that I want to go back to under current families is uh, food allergies. If you have a camper who has food allergies, we have a food allergies addendum that I would love for you to complete. There are many, many, um, there's a lot of different food allergies that campers could have. There's a lot of different concerns about food that we might want to address. And it's noted on the health form to tell us about food allergies, but this, this helps us understand in greater detail what your camper's dietary needs are. For example, there are some kids that are allergic to eggs, and that means they can't have or touch any product that's had eggs in any part of it. And for some kids, it might mean they, they have to pass on the scrambled eggs. So this uh, food allergy addendum asks um, a little more detailed questions about your camper's food allergy, and um, it, there's a place for you to provide your your contact information so we can talk about it. If you want to provide some alternatives for your child or you want to ask some questions about how food is served at camp, um, I'm happy to, to do that with you. But this gives a little more information, especially about making sure if your child has um, some of the more challenging food allergies to deal with, I want to make sure that I know what your child can safely enjoy at camp so that when we're offering alternatives, we're picking something your camper would like. Oh, thank you, Tashia, and 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 Rini. <laughs> um, let's see. We covered kind of quickly um, the things I had jotted down as commonly missed uh, stuff for camp. I'll point out a couple of other things. Um, we have a YouTube channel, and we have lots of videos. And I would definitely recommend these if your camper is coming for the first time. They're going to receive a new camper newsletter. And that newsletter is going to explain the opening day routine, a typical day schedule, um, the rules of camp, about special trips and things like that. Things that we want to make sure that um, new campers are aware of. And then we have a lot of YouTube videos that will be fun for them to watch and get excited about camp. There's some tips for parents in there as well, but it's mostly mostly fun videos for um, for campers to check out. Mm, let's see. Oh, you know what? I don't I don't say very much about this on the website, but every camper when they come to camp will get a water bottle like this, and we will label it with their name and their cabin number and their team. And um, we will every night collect the water bottles at the end of our camp day, and we will run them through the dishwasher and refill them and, and provide them to the campers first thing in the morning again and refill them again at lunchtime. And the water bottles get wheeled around from activity to activity with the campers so that we're making sure everybody is staying well hydrated. Um, Ethel has a question about if campers can bring snacks. Yes. 
Uh, we will provide three meals a day and two opportunities daily for snacks. And there's no additional money needed for that. That's provided as part of camp tuition. Uh, but absolutely, kids can bring some snacks. My recommendations would be individually wrapped snacks. Um, we don't want kids to be eating in the cabin because we don't want crumbs, which equals bugs, which can, you know, cause all kinds of problems. But campers can take a snack outside on the porch and enjoy it. It's a great idea to have some cereal bars or something like that. Um, campers enjoy bringing other kinds of treats like candy. I just recommend a moderate amount, you know, not the giant like party bag of Skittles. That gets a little bit challenging for the counselors to uh, rein in, but small amounts of treats would be great. Kids like to get, you know, um, some candy in packages as well. So that can be something you can send in a package. Uh, really the only thing that parents might want to send that we would prefer you not is gum. We don't allow chewing gum because it's a, it's a hazard to the horses and it makes a big gross mess, so we'd rather they not have chewing gum. But other snacks are perfectly fine, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see what else we can talk about on the website. This Camp Forms page is definitely the place where you're going to spend most of your time. Um, we talked about text updates. We also offer retreats at camp when it's not summer. And yes, and just a reminder um, about how to get to the photos. There's a couple of ways you can get to the photos. If you've already used online registration to get to Bunk 1, if you click any of the register buttons, that's going to take you back to Bunk 1 and you can see photos or summer photos and emails. And those photos are updated each evening. And bunk notes we're kind of sending throughout. Okay, hi Ann, I see your question that you have a checkup on the 18th and the form is due the 18th. Um, you know what I would suggest is uh, just mail the form right after you get it completed. We know it can be challenging to schedule those physicals. I always recommend keeping a copy of the health form just in case something were to get lost in the mail, it won't create a giant headache. But if you mail it as soon as you can after the visit on the 18th, that would be fine. That's, that's no problem. If your child has any particular health concerns noted on the health form, it would be great if we could have a conversation uh, before you send it. <clears throat> but if it's um, pretty straightforward, not a lot of medical concerns, that's no problem for you to go ahead and, and drop that in the mail. Um, Yes, yeah, sometimes folks will uh, try to fax or scan the health form. We ask that you please not do that. The reason is we need an original signature in order to seek treatment in case that was necessary. Um, in the past, we have had some pushback if it was a copied form, if it was something that was scanned and sent to us. So please snail mail those to the address listed on the form, which is Sherry's address, the registration office. So if you want to be sure that your form has been received, you can reach out to Sherry and she'll send reminders about the due dates for final payment and for um, health forms. Yep, thank you for that question. All right, let me see if there's anything else I want to chat with you about. Um, we are still registering campers for this summer. Some of our sessions are full, but we still have space in session one and session two. If you um, go to enroll for camp, you might get a message that says the session is full because when space is very limited, the online registration may no longer be an option. So I would recommend contacting Sherry in the registration office to be certain of the availability or to send in a paper application to her uh, as another option. <clears throat> Let's see. So Sherry is registration at campstcharles.org and my uh, email is director at campstcharles.org. Oh, okay, so she's got a question about heat, I think. Oh, hi, Lindley. Lindley is our Bunk 1 representative, and she is awesome because she helped me turn on Bunk Notes so I could demonstrate that for you today. 
Lindley's a huge help to us. Okay, talking about the heat at camp, <clears throat> even though it doesn't really feel like summer's around the corner when it's still been kind of chilly lately, um, <clears throat> sometimes we must adjust our schedule when there is a lot of heat at camp. Um, and so that means we'd be limiting sports, moving some more activities indoors, being in the water more often. Um, oh, snacks in the heat. Okay, yes. Um, if you're packing treats, snacks, uh, for your camper in their trunk, yes, you want to make sure there are things that are going to stand up to the heat. For example, chocolate would be a bad idea because it would be a big, big giant mess. Um, yeah, I thought your question was about, like, what do we do when it's really hot? So we would adjust our schedule. And that's the kind of thing that I would share with you on text updates to let you know what we're doing to account for the heat. And like I mentioned, we issue the water bottles. We wash them. We replace them if campers lose them. We're making sure they're taking that with them wherever they go and drinking lots of water. Yep, that's a good point, Tashia. Thank you. All right, um, we have had our open house events for this year, for this spring, but if we have a family that did not get a chance to attend and would like to take a tour, that is something that we can schedule. We'd be happy to show you around. Um, <clears throat> we really want campers to feel well prepared for their camp session um, because that means they'll have a better time. They'll, ha they'll enjoy themselves and... Um, Anyway, so a visit can be a great way to prepare. If that's not an option for you, then the YouTube videos and the new camper newsletter and checking out those things can be a good way to prepare. And I certainly welcome uh, your questions, he either here online, type them in if you have any questions, um, or to reach out to me individually so we can discuss setting your camper up for a really wonderful week or two weeks with us at Camp St. Charles. All right, it looks like we covered um, my list of things I wanted to cover. If you joined us late, I'm going to post the video online, and I've not done one of these before, so I'm not sure if I can share it to the YouTube channel. If I can, I will. If um, any of our discussion has uh, sparked any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I want, I want you to feel well prepared so that your camper can have a great time at camp, and I look forward to seeing you in the summer. Thank you very much for joining me.